Hello everybody, it's George from Ireland. So no, this is not my bed. Here I am in the William Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Although his actual room was part of his sister Joan's cottage, eventually the two cottages were knocked through. That's why, as you can see, the door there. Um, and he, he, he owned this property, but he let her live here for a peppercorn rent of a shilling per annum. So we're in Stratford-upon-Avon, which is a town in, in, in Western England. It's got that um, suffix upon Avon since the river Avon bisects the town to distinguish Stratford-upon-Avon from Stratford in London. Uh, anyway, so um, I just trying to think, well, in the county of Avon, in Celtic um, languages, Avon just means river or Avon in, in Irish, for instance. So um, this is the original flooring, if you look down, it's the only original flooring in the building. Um, you can see, well, it's actually quite fairly smooth stone, but it's a little bit uneven, so I had to, had to fit them together. Uh, they had some sort of primitive um, uh, concrete, I suppose, to stick them together a little bit, fill in the gaps. And look at the roof. The roof is actually not that low, because I am tall, and it's, it's well above my head. So I can carry high things up here. Um, okay, and what, what, what have they got this inscription, this special covering they got on the walls? Uh, saying, the roach man's goods kill him, the rich man's goods kill him, will, uh, will permit him no quiet rest to take, and so on. Is that from the good book? So don't be too selfish. So anyway, this is, this is the parlour, it's a four-poster bed, so you can shut the curtains to get the draft out. Remember, no central heating. There's a fireplace, obviously vital. So, um, uh, so bed beds are very pricey, a lot of people didn't get beds, and notoriously Shakespeare in his will, he left his wife Anne Hathaway his second best bed, who got the best one. So people often had to sleep on the floor on straw or other, other pillows and things like that. Um, I don't know if, I doubt any of the furniture is original. We're not allowed to touch it, but people might be naughty and do so anyway. Look at the big range for cooking. So said it's a typical um, Tudor house, one up, one down. Uh, so Shakespeare's born in, in, in um, uh, 1564 under the reign of Elizabeth I. Okay, so it's going to be the hall, which is like the, 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 the kitchen dining room. Um, so this is, the, this is the main social space in the house. Um, anyway, so you'll see a trestle table here with food, not real food, for the family to dine on. So Sister Joan lived through there with her husband and four children. Shakespeare got married at 18, because, um, and his wife gave birth only about three months later. He, uh, she was considerably older than him, possibly 27. Um, it's a bit of an old maid, so a shotgun wedding, I suppose. So you look, some of the clothing they would have worn at the time, and, and I think a lot of it, okay, they've got some wooden panelling. I wonder if some of the, this is what I'm actually touching here is original. Definitely some of the house is original. The foundation's the original. Um, I don't know if some of the wall I'm touching there is original. Obviously the furniture is not. I mean, those bricks in the fireplace, could those be original? And, and that, that um, piece of wood, I mean, I might be looking at a piece of wood that William Shakespeare looked at, and so in that way have a curious connection to him. So um, he did move out of this house later, became quite wealthy. So his father was John Shakespeare, so John um, Shakespeare was a glover, held various positions here in this town, prospered in his trade, and indeed he was elected bailiff of Stratford-upon-Avon, effectively mayor of the town, having been an alderman as in town council for some years. So William Shakespeare's mother came from a fairly wealthy landowning family, not saying aristocratic family, but I mean there were certainly middle class farmers, so that's why they owned a bit of this land. And um, so his, his family was unusually well off considering his father's trade in making gloves. And they knew the Harvard family, as in John Harvard's parents came from this town, Stratford-upon-Avon. Did, did, did William Shakespeare ever meet John Harvard? I'm not sure. London wasn't very large. The church where John Harvard was baptised in London was not is not very far at all from where the Globe Theatre was at all, about a mile. So it's quite possible that they did meet. The population of London was about 100,000. Strictly speaking, the Globe um, is not was not in London. We consider that to be to be um, Southwark because it's just south of the River Thames. In those days, it'd be north of the Thames to be to be part of London. A anyway, but it's not documented whether they met or not. Um, and then we can see the Glover's workshop making things. So his dad making his gloves. Okay, the leather items. Very important when obviously there was no heating, could easily get chilly. And I don't think they can make them out any other materials rather than gloves. I suppose you could have woolen mittens or something. Um, and cotton and things like that. Don't worry, I won't show the guide. No one else has to be, wants to be on this and out to the high street. So that's it. So I thought there would be a gaggle of tourists, but apparently not. We can't go out this way, but I can show you a bit of the garden. And there we go. And a bit of the exterior of the building. So there were, there were two cottages knocked together. Um, and then they moved to another house called The New Place. Then, um, 
So um, Shakespeare, um, he had that daughter Susanna, his firstborn. Then he had twins Hamlet and Judith. And Hamlet died of a sudden illness, age 11. He's buried in Trinity Church, where Shakespeare himself rests for all eternity. Now we're upstairs in the birthplace trust. And you'll see a, 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 a fireplace in every room. Vital to keep yourself warm. Um, but a large house was expensive to heat. A lot of wood and coal you'd have to purchase in order to do so. So looking out onto the street. And glass was very pricey. Some had small windows, open windows, small to not let in too much cold for the draft. And windows that could even be blocked up. You could put something in them to try and keep the cold air out. And um, anyway, the ceiling's fairly low. I'm not going to bump my head on it because, of course, people are, are pretty, pretty shorter than, you know, a man being maybe five foot six at the time on average, supposed to five foot nine now. Excuse me, I'm saying there's no filming in the house, please.